kinda crazy Some days it feels like a jungle maybe If you search then you will find the treasure I got is big, I got is strong The Bible tells Hello, Compass families. I would like to invite you to join us for some family fun this summer. Beginning July 19th, we are gonna have a three-week interactive teen competition for your kids. Huh? I'm so glad you asked. Here's how it's gonna work. Our kids ministry team will deliver a box to your door with everything you're gonna need. Then on Sunday morning, we will drop a new series of kids ministry videos on our Compass Kids YouTube page with a new set of characters and challenges. Now here's where we need you guys. Each family will be assigned a team where you will have the option of participating in different weekly challenges. Your team's level of involvement as a whole will determine how well your character does in the Sunday video. If your team doesn't do well, well then maybe your character gets attacked by a swarm of bees in this week's video. If your character does do well, well then maybe he's able to scale 20 foot walls. I don't know, it's up to you, you guys decide. Now your family safety is our number one priority. So we will be following the guidelines set by our state and local officials. Now I've loved making videos in here, and here, and here. But I think we should do this outside. Yeah! <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. All right, well, hey, how do I sign up? You can sign up today at compasshb.com slash kids. And what are the age groups again? We want anyone, sixth grade and younger, to come and join us. Great, how much does it cost? It's free. Come again? It doesn't cost anything? 
So sign up today and come join us and let's have some fun. Welcome back! Did you guys have a great time celebrating the 4th of July? We had our first ever Compass HP Parade and I know I saw some of you guys there and that was so much fun for me. I hope you guys had a great time celebrating uh, the 4th of July, whether that was yesterday, if you're watching this video on Sunday, or this past week, if you're watching it later. But man, I hope you had fun. We had a great time here at the church, but I'm glad you're back. And I'm glad you're here right now because it's time to dive into the Bible. Can you open up your Bibles? We are not going to be in 1 Peter today. I know we've been studying the book of 1 Peter for quite a while now, but we are going to take a quick break. I hope that's all right with you. If you're in this Bible right here, if you have a Bible that matches mine, will you find page 477? We are going to the Psalms, and if you can't find it, or if your page doesn't match mine, just open your Bible, try to open it kind of right there in the middle, and you should find the Psalms, and then turn to Psalm 57. Can you find Psalm 57? It might be on page 477. Now, if you have a Read and Grow Picture Bible, like this one here, you're going to turn to page 127, 100. And 27. And to give some context of what we're going to be looking at in this Bible right here, today we are going to start with the Read and Grow Picture Bible. So go ahead and turn there, 177, and we are going to start on picture number seven. So if you're still trying to find it, that's okay. Keep going. And we're going to end on page 128. So you have time to get there, but I'm going to get started. And we're going to talk about this right here. This is David. Do you know about David? Maybe the most famous thing we know about David is he struck down Goliath. But does anybody know why he struck down Goliath? He struck down Goliath because Goliath was making fun of God. He was mocking God. And David did not want God to be mocked. David sees that God should be worshipped and elevated. He should be exalted. So David went down and struck down Goliath for the glory of God. And as David's fame begins to grow, as people get to say, oh, look at what David's doing. He's winning all these battles for God. Well, King Saul does not like that. King Saul gets jealous. In fact, in picture number seven here, you're seeing what is building up to. Look at King Saul throwing a spear at David. Because David's winning victories for God. That's not right. But here you see King Saul throwing a spear at David, trying to kill him. And David has to flee for his life. He's now on the run. And he does not deserve to be treated this way. In fact, God has chosen David to be the king. So should the king be fleeing for his life like this? No. But Saul is jealous of David and he's now going after him. So can you turn the page? Because in our psalm here, this is a psalm of David. It says it right here at the top, right on, you find Psalm 57? It says it's a mikton of David when he fled from Saul. So David here is writing this psalm. It's like a song that he's singing and he's writing it about the time that he fled from King Saul. So this goes along with what we're learning right here in the picture Bible. Check out picture number eight. Look at this picture. David's in the cave. He's hiding out with some of his buddies that are fleeing with him. And you got the guards searching for him. I mean, you got these guys running and chasing after David, going uh, all out just to try to kill this guy. I mean, it says that Saul took 3,000 soldiers. I mean, they really want to get David, that they would take so many guys to go hunt him down. And so David, he's hiding in the cave. He's fleeing for his life. I mean, imagine that. That could be so scary. That could be such a hard time. I mean, he's fleeing for his life. What is he going to do? How does he think about this? 
What does he say to God? What does he think about life? I mean, David, this would be such a hard time to be fleeing for your life, to be scared, running in a cave, hiding, not being able to be home, but running for his life. Well, look at what David says as he's writing this psalm. And it says here, in the cave. Okay, so this is where he's at. He's fleeing for his life. He's hiding out. Look at Psalm 57 and jump down to verse 11. The last verse in the psalm. Can you see that verse? Verse 11, it says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all of the earth. You know what David's thinking about when he's hiding in the cave? He wants God's name to be exalted above the heavens. He wants God's name to be known in all the earth. I mean, David, the thing that he's concerned about, the thing that he wants is God to be known, for God to receive the glory, for people to look upon God sitting high on his throne and to worship him. David is concerned with the glory of God. He wants God's name to be exalted, to be lifted high in our minds, for us to be able to see him high and lifted up and to praise him for the great and amazing, awesome God that he is. So David, when he's fleeing in the cave, in fact, remember what we said in the very beginning, how David struck down Goliath? Do you remember why David struck down Goliath? Does anybody remember? He struck down Goliath because he, Goliath was making fun of God. He was mocking the God of Israel. He was defying the God of Israel. And David said, enough is enough. That's not right. And God is going to give you, Goliath, into my hands. I mean, David goes and he destroys Goliath because David wanted God's name to be exalted. David wanted everyone. He wanted all the Philistines. That was Goliath's army. He wanted all the Israelites. That was David's army. He wanted everybody to know that there is a God in Israel. He wanted everyone to know that God is the one true God and nothing compares to him. So David goes and fights Goliath. And now here, as he's running and fleeing in the cave, David wants God's name to be exalted. David wants God's name to be lifted high so that everyone would know that he is God. That's really the point of the Christian life. That's why, as a Christian, I come to church. I want to sing praises to God. I want to open up his word so that I can know him, so that I can exalt him. I want to put off sin day by day as I'm living my life. I want to say no to sin. I want to say yes to righteousness because I want God to be exalted. I want him to be glorified. I want his name to be known. The reason why I go out and tell people about Jesus dying on the cross, the reason why I'm here telling you that is because I want everyone to know that God is, is the one true God. So that's the point of the Christian life. That's why we live. We live to serve and please and glorify God. That may be what a lot of your parents are doing. Do you have a good example of a mom and a dad who are trying to glorify God, who are going to church, who are living their life to glorify God? That's an example that you should follow. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Do you remember that? So we want to we want to see God's name lifted high. We want to see him exalted above the heavens. We want everyone to see. In fact, there is coming a day. The Bible says when Jesus comes back, every single knee. Do you have a knee? Can you bow down? Do you know what bowing down looks like? It's a sign of submission. It's a sign of saying, this guy, the one I'm bowing to, he deserves the glory. And the Bible says that every single knee will bow and every tongue, every mouth, we will confess, we will say that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you know that one day everybody's going to bow, the bow their knee to Jesus? 
everyone's going to say that Jesus Christ is God, that he is the Lord, and God the Father is going to receive glory from that, that's where it's all headed. It's all headed to a moment where everyone, can you think of when we just celebrated uh, America's birthday, we celebrated the 4th of July. Do you know that one day every single person who lives in America will bow their knee to Jesus? They will exalt him. They will say he is God, that he is the Lord. That's where this is all headed. And we need to make sure that we say that now in our hearts, that we turn away from sin and turn to God now. And that we might be saying that day by day and exalting his name. Let me pray for us as we end our time together. Father, we want to thank you that Jesus Christ was sent to die for sins, to rise from the dead, and now he is seated at the right hand of power, the right hand of majesty on high. And he deserves all the glory and all the praise. And Father, I ask that you would save and that we who are watching this video, that we as Americans would, would bend our knees to Jesus. We would confess that he is the Lord to the glory of God the Father and that we would exalt his name together and that he would be lifted so high in our minds in our land, and that his name would receive all the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me here today. I hope to see you again this coming week. And don't forget to sign up for our summer adventure. We're going to have so much fun together. So sign up. You're going to be on a team. You're going to get a color shirt. You're going to be rooting on a character in our videos. You're going to be a, you're going to have a group of people that are on your team and we're going to have some fun coming up here. So make sure you tell your parents to sign up. I will see you guys next time.